Hey everyone, hope you all are doing well. As I mentioned previously, I'm going to put together a video chronicling an ill-fated trip to the Central Coast where I had a date with the US Coast Guard. Um, I don't really mind putting videos like this out there even if it's a little bit embarrassing for me because I kind of feel like if we learn as a collective, then it's worthwhile. Now, with some bad outcomes, it's one bad decision that leads to that bad outcome. But more often, what it is is a bunch of smaller bad decisions that lead ultimately to the bad outcome. So you might want to watch the video in its entirety because um, there's insight to be gained throughout the video. So for me, it all begins with the beauty and the allure of the Central Coast. You know, I went up there on a lark one day and just totally fell in love with the place. I love how rugged it is. I love how remote it is. And I've often stated, I don't really care about the number of fish I catch or how big they are. I go out there for the adventure. But in this case, that brand of beauty comes with danger. In SoCal, your average marine forecast might call for, you know, I don't know, two to three foot swells with big intervals in between. Wind may be topping out at 15 miles per hour. If it's any worse than that, you just say, hey, let's just postpone until next weekend. In the Central Coast, your average marine forecast might go something like, well, maybe like five to six foot swells with wind topping out at over 20 miles per hour. And because everyone else finds that place beautiful, the campsite reservations can be a real bear. You really have to plan like six months out. And so a week before the trip, if the forecast calls for swells like five, six, seven feet with tight intervals and wind kicking up above 20 miles per hour, you're kind of low to give up on the dream. You know, you, you kind of lean toward going, you kind of lean toward, hey, that's, that's what it is. We might get to maybe three cracks at this all year, so we, we kind of have to go for it. I would probably rate this as pretty easy. Just roll your kayak down here, and then you're off into the water. We're gonna, that's more a rock right there, and then we're gonna go out the mouth of the harbor, and then go explore the open water. And so we launch without incident, as you might expect, because we're launching into a harbor. And so by the time we start paddling, it might be like 11.30, maybe, maybe even noon. And so typically in SoCal around noon, you're going to have a pretty good idea of how the day is going to play out. So in SoCal, the winds will typically start picking up around 10 a.m., will peak around noon, and then will attenuate around 2 o'clock. So the wind here is well within like stated guidelines, but I am still tuned into the conditions and I am mindful as evidenced by my monologue. This picked up right after my intro. Flags are a good indication of the wind speed and direction. I reserve the right to change my mind at any second. Okay. Because again, this is not an area that I'm intimately familiar with. You're not going to have access to as much help, as much quick help as if you launch from like Southern California, obviously. So um, I have to decide. This is hitting open water. You know, this is Central California, you know, look at this. Look how tight the intervals are. And um, this one right here, kind of interesting. So I'm glad that we have a pretty capable crew. Again, I will change my mind at a moment's notice. And right now, I am thinking that we are going to switch course. So at this point, I make one of my few good decisions. So this is Google Maps, and we had launched from around here, and there's a golf course, Is that's where we should have been, but anyways. We launched and we hit open water. You know, the conditions were kind of iffy. And so we had kind of a, a game plan. We could either have gone here, and this is about three and a half miles away from the mouth of the harbor, 
or we could have gone here which is um i think it was under two miles maybe a mile and a half and since the prevailing winds and the current were coming from the north we decide like right around here that we're not going to go for this spot but rather go right into the teeth of the wind and the swells thing you know obviously the water is kind of choppy and it's not the best but more than anything i am keenly tuned to the wind okay so i want to feel the wind in my face as we are paddling out okay just in case it gets ugly and it picks up because i want that wind at my back when i'm ready to go home i do not want to have to fight a strong headwind as we're paddling back in so as i mentioned in my other videos more than anything i fear and am in tune with the wind i will deal with this i don't mind okay not ideal but i will deal with it but i am keenly aware of the wind kind of adverse conditions number one rule is to stay calm right uh, the worst thing you can do is panic and when you panic you get tight your whole body gets tight and if your whole body gets tight and rigid okay you can't keep your your hips loose when you deal with this kind of chop you have to keep your hips loose okay and by that i mean you have to kind of like bend at the the waist and go in the opposite direction of these swells or however you want to describe that so important okay so just stay loose stay calm do not panic but unfortunately for us the conditions kept worsening um the wind rather than peaking at 2025 began living at 20 to 25 and were threatening to get worse and i've mentioned this before as well these action cams will never fully convey just how hairball it was out there these cams have a tendency to like flatten stuff out so they never really truly convey just how big the swells are or if you're like rock climbing just how steep it is etc so the conditions were much worse than it would seem on video so at this point i'm fully aware of just how much i've effed it up okay but what can i do now we're in it now my decision goes something like this okay well clearly we should not be out here so what do we do do we turn back well the problem with turning back is we can't see the swells which were coming mostly out of the north right so i would much rather be able to see the swells as they are coming toward us so that i can adjust with my hips right um it's kind of hard for me to relay what that process is but when you when you can see something coming at you you can kind of um shift your weight to counteract the forces i, I hope i can explain that and um if i turn or if we turn back here now and um we catch a swell and it puts the nose of our kayaks into the water we're gonna flip the long way and i hope you can imagine that so in my mind my decision making um, came to the point of okay well here's what we should do we should ride it out okay and i'm hoping that by again two o'clock or so the conditions will mellow okay and then we can in a more safe manner paddle back with our tails tucked between our legs so that was my de decision making was just stay put face the swells and the wind you know onward and then just ride out the storm unfortunately for me at this point i make a fatal error okay i take my eyes off the swell action for like a second and therefore um my body's not counteracting the effects of the swell action right so i lose my balance i catch an edge and i go into the drink okay it's hard to describe the sensation when your body meets 50 something degree water and with the wind blowing if it makes it feel like it's 30 something right it'll quickly sap you of your wits and it'll quickly sap you of your energy right 
and we've all like practiced reboarding the kayaks inside the harbor but that's not real real okay when the water temperature is like 65 68 and you're not getting tossed around by the wind and the swells it's easy to reboard a kayak under these conditions it's nearly impossible and even if you're like super fit or whatever you might if you're lucky have maybe two cracks at it and then you're quickly sapped of your energy and your will but by the hand of god or a stroke of luck the coast guard happens to be very nearby okay so so we communicate and they swing by and um i gotta tell you like the process of fishing me out of the water um you know, with even their 70 foot boat was incredibly difficult because we're just getting everyone's getting tossed about right but kudos to them they were able to bail my butt out of the water and get me on their boat okay at this point you're probably thinking end the video he did some dumb things but i'm glad he's okay but i'm about to give you some insight that i have not found anywhere else on youtube or at least i haven't looked hard enough and so as I'm being escorted into the safety of the harbor by the Coast Guard, I'm naturally kind of worried about my teammates. So I'm watching Bravo and he looks to be in pretty good shape. I'm assuming he's going to take a path like that. But as I'm watching him, he comes here and then he begins to stall and he begins to drift toward the jetty wall. And I don't have to tell you that if he had hit that wall, it, it just would have been horrific, right? And then, so he stalls, and I'm wondering, well, just make a hard right and do this. But rather, he makes a hard left and he does a full 360 and he comes out here. And so naturally, I'm just wondering, like, what is going on? Why is he doing that? And after speaking with him, what he explained to me was... And I don't understand the hydrodynamics and um, I can only guess at what was happening. But basically he's coming out here and he wants to veer right, of course, but the boat will not listen. I mean, he had his rudder hard right and the boat just kept going kind of straight and leftish. And so um, he was in a real dire situation like right around here because, again, the boat is being pushed toward the jetty wall. And so rather than freezing and panicking, what he does is if the boat doesn't want to go right, so he just slams it hard left and he does a full 360 and gets away from the jetty wall. Okay, that's priority number one, right? You don't want to you know, end up dashed against those rocks. And then he comes out here and he does something, again, very smart. He pulls out his paddle okay, and just jams it into the water. And so the paddle is actually working like a super rudder. And by doing that, he can now navigate into the safety of the harbor. So again, I don't understand the hydrodynamics of it all, but the boat simply would not steer right. And so the only thing he could do was just, again, steer hard left, do a full 360, and then use his rudder to get into the safety of the harbor. So the, the takeaway here is, I think it's a really great idea. Like, I don't care if you're in NorCal, Central Cal, or SoCal. I've mentioned that the water action near the mouth of any harbor is just gnarly. And so I think it's a really good idea to have your paddle out every single time you're at the mouth of the harbor. And it can help you not only for stability, for it but for directional changes as well. So that's the big takeaway that I would try to relay to everyone who is watching this video. And so as you might imagine, that incident really put the fear of Poseidon into me. So the following day, we decided to stay on dry land just to be safe. But we did hike to places where we thought most people would not want to hike to. So the fishing was actually okay, considering that we were fishing from shore.
Okay, that's going to bring this video to a conclusion. Um, I hope that by tuning in, you know, others can learn from my mistakes. There's like an old proverb that says something like, smart people can learn from other people's mistakes. Um, anyways, thanks for tuning in. As always, I'm going to leave you with some footage of a, a cabbie being uh, caught off the rocks. So get out there, but, you know, most certainly be safe. And we will see you soon on our next adventure. Bye for now.